So I couldn't get anybody to listen to my thoughts on Revolution, so this is why I'm doing these videos. At least I'm thinking about them and I'm getting them out there and I can watch these videos myself and remind myself uh, about these good ideas um, about the revolution. Drawing up a power map is a great idea. Drawing up a power map of who's in control, who's got the money, who's pulling the strings. Uh, so, uh, in order to avoid failure, Occupy Louisville, we need to change permanent political structural changes. We need to have permanent political structural changes. We need institutional structural changes. We need major changes for Occupy to have a lasting legacy. In order to bring about a change, Louisville's power and dynamic will need to be analyzed in depth. We need to find out who's the wealthy, who's in charge. Is it the mayor? And if it's not him, who is? Does he have puppet masters? Who controls the water? Who controls the electricity? Think about the basics, just the basics. Who controls housing? Who controls land? Who controls electricity? Who controls water? Who controls the sewage? Who controls the cable? Are they giving us what we are entitled to? Um, are they publicly owned utilities? Are they corporate owned utilities? We need more public owned utilities. The public needs to take over LG&E. LG&E is owned by some Europeans. Why are we giving all of our money? We're a coal state. Why are we giving all of our money for electricity to somebody in uh, Europe? Some CEO in Europe. That's wonderful. That's great. So, uh, who's the most irresponsible corporations in our city? With this power map, we can hone in on our specific local politicians and our direct action campaigns for impressive media images, which will keep the movement in the public's consciousness. And this is important to keep the movement in the public's consciousness. We've had a protest group which had gone around and had a new gimmick every week and they did it wonderfully. They kept it in the public's consciousness. So we have to keep it in the public's consciousness to attract the media and then that'll attract the 99% to what it is that we're doing. We need to explain what it is that we're doing. Eventually marches won't be enough for the media to cover it. We'll actually need to hone in on specific issues and bring about structural institutional change in Louisville. That should be the mission of Occupy. Now, I am not speaking on behalf of Occupy. I am a citizen, and I have revolution in my heart. So, I am speaking as, as a man on this planet. Uh, so, more money. More money equals more resources and a serious campaign. We need to be able to figure out how to get some money into it. We need leadership, and we need an agenda. And we need to go underground. We need to uh, just do exactly as Howard Zinn says. It's small actions. And Margaret Mead says it's small committed groups of people. So small committed group of people with small actions, we can change the world. That's the basis of a democracy, consensus-based democracy. Um, there's been a lot of people that's been able to get small donations. Gatewood Galbraith was his main methods of getting donations. He got like $200,000 uh, from $10 and $20 donations. Most of his donations were 10 or $20. Jason Kafori of the 2004 and 2008 Ralph Nader campaign was able to amass tons of donations for Ralph Nader um, through his emails. He was able to say onwards and forwards, here's what the uh, Nader writers are doing. We're getting signatures in this state, in this state, in that state. Here's the issues we're for. We need to, uh, 5 or $10 to pump us forward and keep us going. And it was energetic and it was exciting and it was, it was effective. So more money for Occupy would help out more resources for the food program. We were feeding the homeless. Everybody was allowed to eat, um, but that was that soon died out. We need more recruitment efforts, so we need more people to either donate for us. Um, I think some people would rather donate instead of actually putting effort into the movement. It's I, I don't think it's antithetical to the movement. I think it's a good start, and if people want to chip in five or ten bucks, twenty bucks. I think that, uh, that we could spend five or ten or twenty dollars on the movement much better than they could have spent five or ten dollars, you know, on their own personal uh, self, uh, uh, you know, indulgent activity. So, um, Kafori wrote daily emails. Uh, what was going on? He would hype up the base about the great work we were doing, supporting them with donations. Campaigns thrive on donation donations. Plus, uh, they, there's a one million dollar money bomb. One million dollar money bomb. Ron Paul was having a bunch of money bombs where a bunch of people were meeting up in households and agreeing to give Ron Paul a shitload of money. So, of course, he loved that. That's another idea that we could think about. Uh, money is a problem in a capitalist society, yeah, but small donations, donations from the little guy who have to work all the damn time and has kids and has little free time or single mother who's in the same boat 
maybe willing to chip in five, ten, twenty bucks. So that would be democratic. We would actually be from the people. It would keep us free from corporate influence. We cannot accept large donations. Okay, what five thousand dollars is the limit for presidential campaigns? So that seems to be that would be a lot of money. You would have to really analyze it, and we don't have no strength. So anybody who gives us money, thank you. We can't buy. It's not buying influence. It's buying um, economic equality. It's for a new future. That's what you're paying for. So it's it would make it more democracy, more democratic. And if you want to c contribute more, you can always protest. You can always talk to us. You can write articles. You can um, take pictures. You can. Uh, you know, call your representatives and tell us about your experiences, and we could have like sort of a, uh, uh, you know, a public input to to Occupy. So that way we actually get see what's going on. Go to Twitter, Occupy Louisville, hashtag Occupy Louisville. There's always a lot of cool stuff on it. Um, so just to think about a lot of the people, they use the internet. Ron Paul, Rand Paul, Ralph Nader, Cynthia McKinney, many others. They use the internet and they ask for millions of small donations. And that's the people. That's so democratic. It's such a capitalistic democratic uh, method. But it's great because it's worked and it's breaking records and it's making them contenders in a political race. And there's another reason why those candidates specifically can make money on the internet and not the other candidates. And the reason why Ron Paul can make so much money online is uh, because Ron Paul has a popular message. He's got a populist message. He's speaking truth to power. People believe in what he's actually saying. So if you want to make money, you can make plenty of money online if you have a populist message that the people agree with. Um, he made it, you know, he made millions of dollars by, by doing that. Ron Paul blew up what he called money bombs or house parties were being held. Several folks agreed to chip in $100, whatever they could afford, and it was effective in raising money from the grassroots. The popular wisdom is that the more money in the coffers means you can buy more TV ads. And traditionally speaking, more TV ads means a winning candidate. So that's the corporate media. It's fucking, um, that's their, right, their panties is up their butthole. Because uh, Jake Payne says if you don't have a lot of money backing you, then they can't take you serious. They're not going to be TV ads, so why should I cover you? So without any finances, it looks like a weak organization who deserves no uh, free media coverage. So that's why I think just asking a dollar would get respect amongst working class folks, just a dollar. Can you chip in a buck at least? You know, can you at least chip in a dollar? Say that you say you're for us, but can you chip in a dollar? And um, you know you're contributing to democracy. And you're, if a lot of small donations come in from lots of working class peoples uh, in massive amounts and can be used smartly by the General Assembly of Occupy Louisville and reaching their goals, whenever they decide to clarify exactly what those are, that's something that Occupy Louisville needs to do specifically for Louisville or Kentucky. That's perfect. That's what we need to do. I think direct action campaigns is what we need to do. We need to, if we're not occupying the government chairs, we need to be putting pressure on the decision makers. Yeah, I think we should be the decision makers and we should be occupying uh, city council and metro council and politicians' chairs. So that's that should be the next focus, I think, of Occupy is actually gaining power. That's how working class people get anywhere is by gaining power. If we don't have power, then we need to push the people who um, are uh, on our side but are you know, on the fence about it, and they need to push them, get them on our side. The people that are on our side, we need to champion them and, and you know, cheer them on and be good cheerleaders for the people that support the occupied movement. Um, D. Riley spoke highly of the occupied movement, and I think so did Gatewood. And Gate, that's why we should have endorsed them. should have been a mutual endorsement. So... Um, if we're not occupying the chairs, we can push the good candidates, the good progressive candidates into those chairs, cheer for the good ones, and get the bad ones out. There's an election now. I don't know who's up for re-election who's not, but this is going to be one year, two years th in the making. So um, if they don't win, we don't win any candidates this time, we'll win candidates next time. And if we don't win then, we'll win them the next time. So this is uh, I'm in the long run for this. I'm, I want to see change happen in Louisville. I'm in Louisville. I'm here um, for several years, so... So let's get some change. Let's see the revolution happen. Let's see what we can do here in Louisville. Uh, we need more direct action campaigns to rich people's doors. We need to actually go to the rich people's houses. They got names and addresses, the people who control things. We can go to the governor's mansion or to the board of regents for signing prayer or Ramsey's for another 39 years as king tyrant of UofL. We could serve as poll watchers and make sure everybody who is eligible to vote will be able to vote. We can start organizing and get out the vote campaigns, pass out flyers when we are marching on porches and doors and show the people the economic disparity or show the hardship or show the war um, in between the door handles. Encourage all those who have been registered to vote. And that's crucial because if you haven't already registered to vote, you don't matter. If you don't vote, you don't matter. 88% of Kentuckians, you don't matter. You all don't matter because you're not voting. 88%.
That's the primary. 75% during the governor's race, maybe 30 or 40%, but the majority of you are not voting. The majority of Kentuckians don't vote. Kentuckians hate voting. They hate civics. They hate politics, and that's political as fuck. Saying that you don't like politics is basically saying you don't care about uh, your community. You don't care about your neighbor. You don't care about your working buddies. You don't care about solidarity. You don't care about freedom for everybody. You don't care about a lot of things. So corporations should not be running the state. We the people should be running the state. Workers' unions should be running the state. You know, it should, we should have a strong labor movement in Kentucky. Labor. Labor. We need to have a strike. We need to strike. Tark. Bus. Time for Tark. Bus to strike. If Tark, Bus, and the garbage men were to strike here in Louisville, it would shut the city down. They'd get whatever they wanted. Tark buses should strike. They keep on jacking up. Next time they want to jack up the pay rate of Tark Bus, strike. Fuck them. Fuck that. That's bullshit. Working people need to get to the work, and it's good. We need transportation. We need transportation here. People should be able to move freely. That's the best way for commerce, for people to move freely. So, um, GOTV, organized get out the vote campaigns, passing out flyers, getting people registered to vote, uh, having flash mobs. You could have, they used to dance. They would go to some public arena and just a bunch of, like, 20 people would just go into, like, a choreographed dancing thing. And we could do that with politics. We could have um, just a downtown meeting where we just give speeches all day. That sounds like a great idea <laughs> uh, by an old naderator, uh, Paul Ar Aranos, I think. Um, so we, we may also have to switch up our hashtag names. So to keep in front of the authorities, sure, our hashtag Occupy Louisville is the default one, and we can put out general information. But when we have flash mobs or when we have specific direct action campaigns, we need to have a unique identifier. Um, I liked um, fuck all y'all. <laughs> uh, hashtag fuck all y'all. Um, but since I said it out loud, I don't know if I'll actually use it again. But I used it one time. I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. Um, so, yeah, the uh, we need to think about hashtag names on Twitter accounts, Twitter and Facebook and uh, Gmail and YouTube. Uh, the revolution in Louisville will be televised. It will be televised. The revolution will be televised. We have to consider what social media to use, if any, if websites are blocked, ISPs or cell phone towers. Um, and they've already done this in liberal California. They've taken over the cell phone towers. So they may cut our uh, Internet off. China controls all their Internet. The Egyptian Revolution, they cut the Internet off. And they're able to get, like, some rogue Internet I, internet service providers who are still providing Internet for people. So you can have a march through the West End, crossing 28th and Greenwood, where the Black Power riots happened in 1968 after Martin Luther King Jr. was slain. Come back to the Jefferson Park base. Suggestions to make Occupy Louisville better. You can have a